It's Christmas Eve chat. Uh, happy Christmas to you and your families. I'm going to be doing a highly anticipated VOD review in the Art of War series for you today. I did this on Twitch um, about 10 days ago, but it's been really, really requested on the YouTube comment section and in a Discord to do an assassin review. And thankfully for you, you're very, very lucky. And we have a lot of two people to thank in particular. Well, a couple of people to thank in particular. We managed to get VODs from Kid Intra and NG, who are the two who are two of the bow players in the Bonsai X group. And we're allowed to show their comms as well. So big thank you to those two players and big thank you to the Bonsai leadership for allowing us to show those as well because they had to check with those and, and they managed to release it. And this is massive for the community, right? Because now we're going to give you the opportunity here to hear those things. I have a lot of players who want to understand how assassin groups play. So we're going to do the first five minutes is me think, is me talking about how assassin groups play in the modern meta. And then we're going to do a detailed VOD review on these two players, side-by-side -side comparison of their VODs to th see what's happening, flipping between the two scenarios so you can see how they work and a comparison against their war. Um, versus para so you know it's a very very high level war on barry as well so thank you very much to all of those players who's given us the opportunity to do that today and you know guys to keep bringing you this content there's a lot of people who want to support the channel and want to help the new world community by carrying on producing this content so if you do enjoy it please like and subscribe it just helps everyone in the community know that there's common interest in keeping this together and it massively supports the channel as well and we're trying to get 6k subscribers before christmas if you can help me do that i would much love to massively appreciate it as well anyway Enough of that moaning. If you want to do all of that um, stuff, Twitch link is in the description below. You can follow me on Twitch. Discord link in the description below so you can get more detailed questions on any of this stuff as well. But let's get into it. Okay, guys, and just a quick mention as well, I'm doing a Twitter series at the moment where every day we tweet Amazon Game Studios with new PvP content until we get new PvP content. So day 15 of tweeting they just until we get new PvP content. I, I need your ideas. If, there any, if you've got any PvP content ideas you would like to get through to AGS, please let me know in my Discord and YouTube comment section or follow me on Twitter and drop me a DM so I can carry on promoting this to AGS just so we can try and get some more PvP content as well. Okay, now when I did the War Roster Meta video in the Art of War series, and if you haven't seen that, I'll link that in the top right of your description for you now. Uh, sorry, in the top right of your screen for you now, just so you can go and look at what the War Roster Meta is. And it hasn't changed a great deal. People talking about Greatsword and how that's impacted. We'll talk a little bit about this. But the top left of your screen here is what we need to focus on, I think. When I said, here's what the war roster meta is, there's probably two assassin groups. Some companies want three assassin groups, but in reality, I would say two is what I most commonly see across EU and US. And I listed four assassins and a healer, but people want a bit more description around what that is. So I'm going to, this one on the right here is what I most commonly see. And it's a variation. There's a lot of variation you can have here. But ordinarily speaking, what most groups do nowadays, most assassin groups do, they will have one, perhaps two melee engagers. What does a melee engager mean? A melee engager is going to be something like, in olden days, you would think about it as probably hatchet spear, SNS spear, maybe, something like that. Even you could have someone playing Blunderbuss Ice Gauntlet if they were a very good Blunderbusser. Um, I would say pr more predominantly you would get spear hatchet or something like that. Where are we today? Well, today you're actually looking, and those are all light players, by the way. Uh, in today's world, most of those assassins, most of those melee engagers now play Greatsword. Greatsword is too powerful in the current meta. The heavy attack tracking, the ability to vary up your timings between light attacks and heavy attacks to throw off the enemy dodges is very, very powerful. And you have a lot of mobility as well. And Relentless Freedom as a perk is just crazy overpowered. If you get, if you get rooted, you can get straight out of it. Free yourself with Relentless Freedom. You can apply a lot of disease, anti-heal as an assassin as well. So... And huge damage, of course. I mean, that's one thing we haven't said. It was just huge damage and huge pressure. So, I mean, any any healer in your team comp will tell you probably the one thing I hate playing the most at the moment is Greatsword because it's just impossible to get away from. Okay, so if we're looking at this melee engager role, I would say mostly it's medium Greatsword. And the reason why it's medium Greatsword, Hatchet, is because when you go into the offense mode, you do 15% more damage, but also take 15% more damage. So if you're medium... Normally you have that additional armor, but taking the 15% additional damage makes you basically more like a lighter player, but just you need that tankiness. If you were light and take 15% more damage, you are going to be so squishy, you're going to insta-die. So I don't actually see many light greatsword players. I mostly see medium greatsword players for that reason. And Hatchet obviously just gives you defy death and all of the social distancing mobility as well. So actually what a lot of people tend to run is two kind of ways I see it playing. 
played out is um, greatsword for damage, hatchet for utility, so defy death, and then the throw-in axes for ranged attacks, and disease and slow and rends, all that stuff. Or some people play the greatsword for utility and hatchet is their primary DPS weapon. Or, of course, you can play both because they both scale off strength decks. So that's absolutely a thing as well. I have seen a couple of greatsword SNS players, not very many. More common is greatsword hatchet. But that's not to say you can't play your own other types of melee engager. I'm talking about what I'm seeing across the EU predominantly right now. And to support that melee engager, you'll have a team of bows, ordinarily speaking. Okay. Now, and this could be muskets, right? It could be muskets, but predominantly, especially on attack, it's bows. Now, why is it bows? What happens here is imagine they're attacking a defender. Imagine this is a, a factor, probably hunting healers a lot of the time as well, right? Your melee engager goes in. The healer will probably call out that they're going to get pressured. So the defenders come in. But as this guy produces a some kind of CC, hopefully a slow would be really nice, something like that. These guys all insta fire straight onto that healer. And if this damage is coordinated enough, if the bows actually work together and fire their damage very quickly, very simultaneously, then this, this healer's insta-dead. There's kind of no defense against it. It's so, it's so good. But how you make an effective assassin dex team is the ability to work together. So ordinarily, dex players are used to being quite high on the scoreboard. They can be in danger of being stat padders. So what I'm looking for from an effective dex team is teams that can really work well together. And are not folk are not too worried about ignoring other targets to pad damage on and actually focus on getting kills and working with their group simultaneously or helping the raid. Because even in other instances, you could have a musket or a bow up here on 15 stacks, and it's easier to farm healers, but those bows working to get rid of that musket on the wall has huge value for your raid. Those are the kind of things I'm looking for. Um, on defense, you might not have as many bows, you might have muskets. You could even run two of these groups, one musket group on the wall, one bow group running around. But bow is in a very, very strong place. With the hitbox changes recently, you're really starting to see the value of the good bows coming out because um, it's a very high um, high skill, high reward play style that a lot of players can't actually play. So if you've ever been in an arena with a bad bow player, I mean, they die and they deal like 20k damage across four rounds, you know, it feels bad. The good bows, you know who the good bows are when you've played against a good bow. These guys are very, very, very effective. So what I expect from an assassin group is broadly speaking that, and then I've got two times single target healer. Now, what I mean by that is I don't mean two healers. I don't mean six in a group. I mean a healer that runs probably Light's Embrace and Divine Embrace, okay? And then they have an option on the third perk. Some, some groups, some healers don't like to run Sacred Ground because the group is so mobile that you very rarely get an opportunity to drop a Sacred Ground on it. Although your melee engager will absolutely appreciate you for having a sacred ground at the feet. You could run something like orb or something like that, right? But in reality, the two single target is the most important. One for the divine embrace, because that can be a clutch heal that really saves someone and it's got a very short cooldown. And accelerating light's embrace, the weapon perk really synergizes nicely with an assassin team, okay? Now, an assassin team healer will have quite low healing numbers because these guys don't have very high HP pools and they're very squishy, so they die quick. It's much harder to heal this group, and you're very mobile. You don't get someone sat in the sacred. You don't get a beacon you can throw out to heal a whole raid. So don't look at your, and don't, if you're looking at, if you're so focused on leaderboard stats, you're gonna look at these healers and go, these healers aren't performing well. Don't ignore leaderboards when it comes to these healers. Talk to their assassins. How do you feel that healer supports you? Do you know when they're dead? Do you know when you're in range of heal? Do you know when you're out of range for a heal? Do you play together? Does this healer follow you around? Can this healer stay alive? Does this healer call out when they're in trouble? If they can do all of those things, probably a very effective assassin healer. It's a very different play style to main Zerg healer or point group, point group healer. Hugely different play style. Very difficult play style to master. But you need to find them and you need to pair them with these people because they can have huge impact on your raid. Okay? So, yeah, ordinarily speaking, melee engager, you could have two melee engagers, two bows supporting, whatever you like. Um, I think the group we're looking at today is a group of bows um, and again, you can have muskets on defense. You can have muskets in attack as well. Muskets have high value. They play slightly differently, but you just have to think about it. But I would ordinarily say, if you're thinking, you know, high level, how do I get the most value from this team? A melee engager who calls a target out and the damage comes in when they're low and have these bows talking to each other. They need to be quite vocal players. You don't really want silent bows too much. It's okay to have one silent bow, maybe two silent bows who follow another bow, but you do need one bow guy as well also to call out targets for the damage to be focused in on as well. That makes it really, really effective. Most bows ordinarily play 
100 to 150 con. And I see most bows running 150 con, if I'm being honest with you. You need to run the most, the minimal amount of con that you need to survive. And 150 just produces that extra resilient. And resilient, when you are a light player, has so much high value. If you, if you don't understand why resilient has such high value for you, I will link in the top right of your screen for you now my why you need five resilient video, which does explains resilient and how crit chance and crit damage works on this game. But basically, if you're a light player, you absolutely need resilient. It's without question, you should have five resilient. Then you can run different things. I see a lot of bow players talk about the value of elemental version versus shirking fortification versus freedom. Um, there's some there's some differences, but you know, resilient is the way to go, undoubtedly speaking. We'll do some build videos on the on the assassin groups more specifically later on, but for now, I just want to focus on how to how to play this as within the game. So, or yeah, you're going to call out squishies and healers in particular, and the ability to process to pressure healers and low damage targets is absolutely critical. And I expect these guys to occupy safer areas, but you don't want these guys at the same time. When I say oh, safe areas, I don't want these guys at the back here just padding damage by shooting forward. The best bow players, the very very best bow players. Can play quite aggressively if you're especially on attack they can play behind these ramparts here and fire their damage across the raid like this and that has huge 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 value because when they take these pressures up when they take these points up here it makes it so difficult for the defenders to sit in these quadrants that they have to play somewhere else and you can actually force enemy positioning with aggressive positioning of your bows it does require your bows to be good to not die but you will find the best bow players are not sat at the back like in an OPR map, just plinking arrows into the capture zone. They are playing aggressively, they're taking aggressive positions, and they are forcing enemies into open positions where they don't want to play. And then, and especially, you know, you normally get that point where the healers are all stacked on bottom left, and I want my assassins up there pressuring that stack because then the healers have to rotate. If the healers are rotating, they're not healing, or they have less time to heal, and we can have more impact as a raid. Okay, so we're going to be watching NG Maybe and Kid Intra, both available on Twitch. I will link their Twitch links in the description below for you. Go and drop these guys a follow. They regularly stream their war content. Both superb bows and really, really top lads as well with it. So uh, image on the screen for you now. Go and check. Go and drop these guys a follow just to help them out. But anyway, let's look at key moments that I select in the war. We're going to look at their comms. I would say for me, this war is really divided into inside fort and outside fort. Um... And I think the playstyle outside fort is a bit better than inside fort, and that's not surprising because inside fort it always gets a bit harder for assassins to play because it's much more cramped up for you. So outside fort assassins can get a lot of space, have a lot of impact, and and disengage. Inside fort it does become that a little bit more difficult. You're more upfront, confronting their assassins more of the time. So anyway, with that in mind, let's look at what these two guys are running. You can see um, we're looking at NG right now. NG's playing bow hatchet. You can see his abilities on the bottom right for you there, and he's running. Um, gemstone dust as well, presumably with cleanse potion as we move on down the map. Uh, intra running the same, bow hatchet, cleanse potion, and then gemstone dust as well. And I can see he's at 10k HP, so I can't remember if we spoke about this, whether that was 100 or 150 con, but I know they respec later on. So let me just cut to the key moments for you right now. Okay, so first we're going to watch intra, then we'll select some clips from NG as well. And what I want to do here is a bit unusual, I just want to play the first, uh, it's not the first minute, it's a select minute. I want to play a minute of this war, and I'm going to be silent, and I'm just going to let you listen to the comms, and then we're going to dissect what I think the key comms are afterwards, and the key move moments in this one minute of gameplay, and I think it's going to give you a lot, to, a lot of value. So let me just play this and shut up. Okay, no. Rip it now. Zero two. Heavy pen now. Nice. nice. He's dead. He's dead. You're taking beer. Taking beer. Uh, respawn in. Three. Look our top. Look our road. Look our road. Look our road. Do you see too low? Yeah. Penny on the right one. Rapid. Don't rip it. Nice. Look, uh, inside of me, the balls. Legit, inside. Where? Inside. Ping him. Uh, on our road, on our road. Our road? Our road. I'm gonna help my okay. Yeah. I'm going Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I got next you. Next you. Next Theo, Theo. Yeah, look, response. Look, response, 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 response. Top of point, top of point. But our road is so full. Holy moly. Mask is so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mid point anyway. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. go. Touch point, point, touch point. Tiger dead. Touch point, touch point, touch point. I think we can touch here. I have so many muskets on me, I have so many. The vault are here? Yeah, it happens. I'm still on point, I'm still on point. No life for her? I'm I'm hitting I have so many muskets. Nice, nice, nice. We're we're pointing, we're pointing, for sure. I gotta get out. Got out, got out. So that's the one minute of that war. I want to go through a couple of key moments that I think are really important to pick from here. The first thing, the most obvious thing I want to talk about is actually getting on point. A lot of players don't seem to understand the value of getting on point. I mean, this game, war game mode, 
Uh, the only way you win war is by capturing the points. It's not about who has the most kills or anything like that. Now, of course, all of those factors and how you capture the zone is multifaceted and very complex. And part of it is kills. But the majority part of it is getting on point. And the amount of conversations I've had with light players who say, well, when you say all players on point when I shot call, they say, Def, you don't want all players on point because you don't want the light players on point because we're going to insta-die. No, no. When I say everyone on point, I mean all of you. Because in these moments where we're about to capture a zone, I just want everyone on point. I want to guarantee we capture this. Because even if you die here, as long as we capture, it's worth. Or in the final fort phase, if you die, but we capture, it's worth. Okay? And what you saw from these guys is, these guys who are playing on high-value mortal empowerment stacks and things like that, even they stack the point when they need to. And there's a couple of ways you can stack the point when you need to. I'm just going to mute it and come back a bit. But when they make the decision to go on point, what's the first thing they do? Is they switch to hatchet. Why switch to hatchet? Activate Defy Death. It's going to give you time on point when you don't die. Okay? There's also some inbuilt fortify on the trees. I don't know what trees they're playing, but there's an inbuilt fortify. There's more value you're going to get from musket than you are from bow on point. And it's easier to use. You can apply some damage. So they move on to point with their hatchet. Okay? And actually, look how long he survives on point. Because he iframes a lot, because they're dex players and they have additional iframes with the stone form as well to be able to get that to to get that point pressure. And you might argue and say, well, he can stay on, but he's even going on for that little bit of time and helping get that tick, he still managed to preserve his mortal power stacks. Okay? Really, really good value there from his bow from the bow players in Bonsai here. Just giving that additional tick pressure. And look, he's occupied some really dangerous positions there, okay? And still survives. So that shows you you can actually get on for a little bit of time and disengage when needed. So that was really good. I liked that a lot. So that was the first thing I wanted to focus on, getting on point. Just watching that clip there, look how he repositions. Now, this is a little tip that I didn't get from this video. and I'd heard about it about three weeks ago. Someone said, can I buy cannons? And I, and I don't really don't like, I said, why do you want to buy cannons? I want to buy cannons because we can use them for line of sight protection against muskets on the wall. So just to play that bit back here, you can see exactly what Intra does. Intra's getting pressured by the muskets on the wall, hard pressured, manages to roll behind this cannon that buys him enough time and to just heal up there to take the pressure off the muskets and an area's plane and an area to re-engage for big value okay so cannons around the map can actually give you that line of sight break versus muskets on the wall just to provide some additional cover there so i really like that i want to go back and just focus on a couple of things here as well um the first thing i want to focus on when i go back to this two minute 30 clip is their use of pings are extensive. Now we've mentioned this on Art of War before, but look here, the whole team here is constantly pinging targets and pinging areas. That is additional visual information to help you focus on particular areas where they want, where this group is saying, we need to focus our damage in this zone. And I see players use it um, sporadically in, in VOD reviews. This VOD review I did for this was one where I noticed it used more than any other group. They're using pings 24-7. And that, that visual information, just like looking on the map to find out where your group is, is another way to say, focus your damage in this zone. Find my ping and focus your damage. So I really, really like that. And I also liked how you, some people will call this busy chat or cluttered. I like how busy the chat is. You see these guys are all talking to each other. At this point in the game, when everyone has probably 3,000 hours, 2,000 hours in this game, 4,000 hours in this game, you're all mechanically at least decent. If you play PvP, you're mechanically decent players. How do you go from being mechanically decent or even mechanically great to being superb? Even the most mechanically great player is only going to be 7 out of 10 in New World Wars because New World Wars is so much about communication. And I know it's hard if you have anxiety or anything like that, but in reality, you've got to try and get past that. Try and find players you're comfortable playing with and work with the group. Because this comm is so constant information and and it's some people find that information overwhelming but the best players can absorb all that information and do something with it so i actually really really liked how they constantly called out low targets constantly focus on where the enemy bows were and they were trying to pressure those enemy bows to provide their raid value because they know what enemy bows are doing exactly the same thing they're trying to hit their your healers and if you can help protect your healers by pressuring the enemy bows and getting them out of positions where they're dangerous you have big raid value okay so there was so much of this I like. Just want to play that third, play um, that minute again, and then we're going to look at Engie's VOD. I see him. Heavy now. Heavy rapid now. See him. Go to Heavy pen now. Nice. Constantly calling out what kind of damage is coming in, when it's coming in, who the target is, so they can all focus their damage together. I also like how you notice these bows. 
They very rarely play in open spaces like the road. They like to play in bushes and behind these tree stumps. Again, it's all about making visual cover, breaking the line of sight versus the muskets on the wall or the enemy bows, and about giving yourself that little bit of additional time to be able to um, t fire out damage without getting focused by the enemies. I he said, he said, You're taking beer. Take uh, respawn in three. Look on our top. Look on our road. Look. See how they're calling out respawns? They might be able to hit respawners coming in if there's healers on the way coming back or have some other impact. Or they know that respawners might not come out of main B gateway and might jump down and jump into this zone. So they also got the, the wherewithal to say respawners coming. That's going to impact how we play and calling that out as well. Look out, look out, look out, right? Do you see Yeah. Penny on the right one. Weapon. Third rapid. Nice. Look, uh, inside of me, the balls. Legit, inside. Where inside? Ping uh, On our road, on our road. That question, okay, so many times I hear people call out a target and they say, I didn't know what you meant. A intro, that's intro's voice, by the way. Yeah, she goes, where? Like, so, so I, if people go, I didn't know what you meant by that call, I always say, well, just say, what do you mean, Def? Like, have a conversation with me during the war. Like, you know, talk. I don't understand what that call is. Intro is, well, what do you mean on the road? Like, it's a big road. What, well, I need more information. And then he gets the ping. I can see the ping just come up, 52 minutes on left-hand screen. He goes, on the ping, and he goes, ah, oh, okay, and he refocuses. Watch this. Are we? I'm gonna help him. Okay. Yeah. Refocus, because he got that information. So having, I can't. It, it, it sounds so simple, guys. I, I really sound simple. Just talk to your group. But you watch so many vods where people don't talk to their group. And at the end, when you go through the vod review together with a group, and they go, oh, "I didn't know what you meant by that," and you go, "Well, why didn't you say?" Oh, I don't know. I was busy. Oh yeah. yeah. Theo GG is a bow on Parasite, so they're trying to pro fo they're trying to pressure the enemy bows oh, here. Response, I think response, Theo's response, a bow anyway. And then they get the call from the group leader, touch point, think we can touch, instant pop berserks, try and get on. I have some of the muskets on me, I have some. Yeah, it's I'm still full, I'm still Hammer on. Okay, so we'll put um I put NG's VOD over NG over Intra's VOD so you can see side by side what's happening. But one thing I want to mention again that people might not notice is they're both running stone form. So people tend to think when I play assassin, if I'm gonna play assassin, I need to be five con and I need to be full damage, and I should be running detonate, and I should just do everything offensive at the expense of defense and, and the good players, like the bonds and the power players, that's what they do because they have so much kill potential and so much kill at the end of the war. You'd be surprised how many defensive perks and how defensive their armor set up these guys play. These guys understand that how you get maximum value in war is surviving. You don't get maximum value in war by dying, especially when you're playing a role like bow or musket that requires high mortal empowerment stacks. If you can die from mortal empowerment, if you can die, you're never going to get your mortal empowerment high enough to have big, big value. Okay, that's the first thing. So you notice that both of them run stone form because it's another get out of jail free card. I'm getting hard focused. I can run stone form here. I can probably survive with stone form. It's another way to preserve your stacks. And they all run, right? They don't run like refreshing mostly for like additional abilities because then they can spam more abilities and get more damage out. Most of them run, as I say, Resilient Elemental Aversion Weapon Perk or Resilient Elemental Aversion Freedom. There might be some Refreshing Evasion in there, but it's not like, you know, six months ago, they were all running Resilient Refreshing Evasion, spam abilities on point, bang, 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 just pump out 3 mil damage in a war. That's not the meta nowadays. The meta nowadays is survive, get your empowerment stacks high, have value for the raid later, play aggressive, play pressure zones. It's a different meta now than what you might have seen six months ago, okay? So, um... You couldn't see, you couldn't hear Entra's group com, Engie's group comms there. So I'm going to um, just overlay Intra's VODs with it back. But what you saw is I think they both play in similar areas. You can see they're both supporting each other. And they don't have to be holding hands as bows. It's a bit different to a bruiser group, but it tends to play a bit closer together. They just need to be focusing damage into the same zones and same targets. So really impressive, guys. I think these guys do a super job. And here's the next minute of gameplay. I'll do uh, NG and Intra over the top of each other as well. Um, but what, just what I want to show here is they have to reposition. They've lost control of the right-hand side of B here. So they tried to, and you see how far they got on the capture. They, they've managed to lose all of that now. So they're going to reposition around the map here and just watch how they reposition. Come on, yeah. Oh, push out now. Have to take left side. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Careful, careful, careful. Go road, go road, go road. Yeah. Let's play left side, let's play left side. Left side, okay. Can you see Chrome Blaze on the road? 
My help point for now. Both on, both on left side, both on left side, both on left side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The cannon invade space. Bro, it's just our cannon, the cannon is so Maybe we can go top left actually, they're rotating off. Come see, come see, come see, come see. Okay. Look, to you, to you, to you, to you. pinging. Yeah. Okay, so you see the repositioning there. They play on the outskirts of the map. You don't see these guys kind of getting right in. And when you traditionally think about, so you know, if you think about heavies in the middle, then mediums, then light players, all as they spread out around the map, you see these guys rotating really wide angles around the map. They're not running through the middle of the point, and they're just keeping their safe distance from from enemies here. Okay, I think that worked really well. Now, what I want to show you is. Um, this section of war that I know that they particularly wanted me to show, this is a really, really high impact value of the war. Here they go and farm quite a few kills. I'm going to let this run for a good uh, minute and a half, maybe. You can just watch how effective they are on this segment of play. Oh, get fucked. Come please, come please. But uh, Kaya, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. He got hit by a healer. Yeah, nice, behind us, behind us, behind us. He has no healer. I see. He's alone, he's alone. Leave him alone. Look, 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 I'm on Makiak here, right side. I'm pushing nice. the balls away, yeah. guys. Long lifts, whatever is low. Okay, Look, really, really. Look, Respawn, 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 respawn. Yeah. Look, Sonny, 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 one. Yeah. I'm on me, on me, on me. Holy. I can't, I can't, I can't. I, can't. Yeah, I got Sonny. I'm safe. For a second. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm push down. Oh, look, tag on me. Area, area, side, area. Side, side, area. Side, 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 side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, back, man. No, back, man. I got him. I'm one HP, I'm one HP. Look, feel, notify it. Dead. I'm on area. Please, please, it's up, it's up on point, please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Tier on point, tier, tier. Tier, tier, tier. I might need a heal. Good fire, good rapid. I have so many masks on me. Yeah, yeah, all good, all good, I'm good. I'll see you alive. Heavy pen. You healing? So that was an example of a very, very impactful passage of play here. The guys managed to secure a huge number of kills in a very, very short space of time, focus their damage effectively, captured the zone, and that rotation just worked super well. And I thought that was a really good passage of play because you could see the constant call outs, the constant focus on squishies. I think Para got a bit mixed, bit best up there. They had a maybe, if they'd have had some heavier players, that would have been, wouldn't have been so easy, but they had so many light and players around that zone, particularly the healers. You can just see the constant pressure on the light players, taking the heals away from the zone, allowed Bonsai to get that capture zone there on point C and, and really just basically complete the capture. So, yeah, excellent passage of play. Now, another passage of play I want to look at, and I'm just going to let this play out. Good one, honestly. Hold the Kashi, one shot. Top of point. Yeah. Wanna go bon? Okay. Oh, see, yeah, let's go. Look at Muskets. Look Muskets for one second. Look Muskets for one second. Go, go, go. Three, Three, two, two one. one. Nice. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. We can play top point. What a beautiful kill that is. Muskets for one second, three, two, one, boom, musket dead. When they just all coordinate that damage, and that guy would have been on such high value stacks, mortal empowerment stacks, that taking that out of the kill on Graxi there has phenomenal value from your raid. And the amount of times I hear bow players say, we can't pressure the musket, look at how effective that was and how clean that was. Just that level of communication is what you need to make those things happen. And then I want to look at one focus of section, one section of gameplay here that I've not really considered myself, actually. I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about this, but I think what the Bonzo bows do so well here is the attention to detail is when the respawners are coming in, they apply so much pressure to the respawners, in particular the healers who are running in. Like you watch this section of play now, they're so, so focused. They've already pinged the door, right? They've already said respawners are coming in and they are about to focus all their damage on all of the healers. One, because the healers are not with their group. The healers are in a massive open zone, which is why I always tell players when you're respawning out of fort, don't just run out of B gateway. Like come off the top and play and jump down ramparts for a bit of visual cover. Because look at how effective this section is. Honestly. Hold the cash One shot. Top of point. Yeah. Wanna go bon? Okay. Oh, yeah, let's go. Look at Muskets. Look at Muskets for one second. Look at Muskets for one second. Three, two, one. Yes. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. We can play top point. This section is. Can I fire up? Yeah. Chrome base. I see Chrome base. I see Chrome base. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just keeping the balls away. Maybe yeah. Look, look people, they're coming in. Look people, they're coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruby, 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 Ruby. 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 Ruby.
Look this uh, tequila guy. Look this tequila Benji, guy. Benji, Benji, Benji. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Ari, Ari, Mary. One. 35. He's ready. I'll push him a little bit. Run, boys. Yeah. Okay, I can't kill him, I think. Nikki's pushing. I'll push, I'll push, I'll push you with you. I'll push you with you. Ari, Ari, Ari. Dead. Dead. Tiger. Dead or over there. Oh my god, we're a tiger. Big. I think this is the gameplay, by the way. We can yeah, yeah, yeah. We told look, look to B point. Look to B point. Look to B point. We, respawn now. Respawn now. Okay. Around point, all low, guys. Yeah, yeah. try. Yeah. Stop the respawn, guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, deep, I'm deep into the respawn. Okay? Revolta coming yeah. in. Revolta here. Revolta yeah. southern. You have secret now. Yeah. Revolta on points. Pony running in. One. Point, yeah, point, 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 point. We have it. We have it. We have it. We have it. Yeah, nice. They all get interrupted. These motherfuckers. Let's go. Let's go. Anyway. Um, we're going to play out this minute uh, minute of VOD here as well, doing a doing a dual perspective from NG and, and Intra. Uh, they're really low. Zepter. Uh, help, help Sige, help Sige, break Sige, if you can. Oh yeah. I'm on really Sige, by the way. He's low. I'm going to break Zepter dead. Thank you. He's, He's getting good. clowns. Okay, I'm good. Come on, yeah, man, yeah, man. I'm good, I'm good. There's, there's, there's. Yeah, Eri pushing, Eri pushing. Look on stairs, Eri. Yeah, he's nice, he's nice. I'm going to break the top three quick. I'm going back down. Look, Tiu maybe on dummy stairs. Tiu oh. dummy stairs. I'm pushing I'm it, see. He's one shot. I see. Dead. Nice. Nice. Yes. Back there. Back there. Yeah, yeah, He's dead. Help C. Look C. Look C. There's okay. stairs, stairs coming in stairs. They're repairing the game, by the way. If you can hit that. A? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, yeah. Look, yeah. Look, yeah. Look, 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 Azad, uh, serious, all serious guys, so. On, yeah. on catwalk, on catwalk, super fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm on Azad and Crowblaze. Yep, yep. Yeah. A couple of things just for me to cover there that I really like. See the high, um, high focus on the shops. This one here is a repairs generator. This one here is a shop. If you can kill both of these, it eliminates the ability for your enemy, for the defenders to be able to buy cleansing potions inside the fort, which is absolutely huge. Cleansing potions are the single best potion in the game, probably. So that's, that's super high value. Uh, the second one there is the repair parts generator. You need repair parts to repair the doors. And repairing gates in particular phases is, is highly detrimental to an attack. So actually focusing on both of those is key. And NG does a good job of that. Into a little bit little bit more focused differently. But um, then you look at the door phase as well. Both of these players hit doors at particular points trying to help get their bruiser groups in. Bruiser groups can help capture the fort a little bit more effectively than the assassins can. So just help your guys get in by pressuring the gates. And what Intra does a bit differently to NG is Intra sat at the top of the stairs protecting stairs. So what you can notice there is, you know, why is this position here so valuable on the stairs? I'm going to show you a raid plan real quick. So up here is where, is where Intra is, okay? And NG was actually either here or on the stairs. Now, I'm going to, in fact, we can show you on this perspective. Right, when you're here, when you're in this position here, which is where Intra is, there's, there's basically two ways to be engaged. One, they can come up the stairs. Okay, that's those stairs right there. Or two, they have to go up above B gateway and then run all the way around. And you can see that coming a mile off. So what NG does is NG actually basically protects these stairs. Now he, he gets Chrome Blaze as a healer. There's some squishies that are around here. He applies that pressure. Whenever anyone starts pressuring the stairs, he calls stairs. So NG can afford to take this very aggressive position here as, an, as a bow player shooting catwalk and shooting down here because Intra is basically covering for him. Or he's got the call that you're going to get pressured on stairs right now. And you don't need to worry about this area over here because you can see it coming a mile off and then you can reposition instantly. So this is so much better than playing above B gateway. B gateway, you can get it from this stairs, this stairs, and there's much more ground to fight on here. Here you've got one area you need to defend and you can play conversely the other side of the fort on this area. And I really like the comms. So they started to call it our stairs on our stairs. And someone said, we're, we're so comfortable here. This is we're already calling this our zone. And says, yeah, this is our zone. You can see that what they're trying to do, they're trying to carve one piece of the fort just for them. They're drawing a battle line. They're saying, this is our area. You can have that other area over there, but we're going to stay here. We're going to have an impact. And then we're going to try and basically impact you so much that we take you out of the game. These guys are not roaming around the whole fort. They're just trying to carve up their area as bows where they can just see most of the fort and have really high impact here. So I really like that. And their first play when they got up was disrupt the muskets, as I said to you before. Get up and disrupt the mus muskets. Kabaloo from Guaxi, the power of muskets are on top here. NG goes up, really, really pressures those. Intro is then focusing on healers. Very, very high value. 
Okay, after this segment, I don't want to say it goes downhill, but it starts to become, a, you know, it looks like they're going to win from this point on. I would say they're really having high value, but Para starts to gain control. So I think when I watch this, when I watch this VOD back, what I think Bonsai are trying to do is they're trying to cover, if you can call this left side, right side, depends on your perspective. But from a defender, this is left side of the four. It looks to me like they try and basically take control of this side and are happier to leave the right hand side of the fort to Para, the defenders. And they always try to have more bodies here so that their bows have a platform to build off of. Long story short, what happens in this war is they lose control of this zone. Paras start being able to breach this zone, and then they can push up and disrupt these bows really hard. So from here on out, it's not as effective. I will show one other section of play just so you can see what happens when they're getting disrupted. Do these bows play as effectively together as they once did? Let's find out. Nice, we completely did it again. Oh, I see him, I see him. Dead. On point, around point, on point, low. I'm dropping down. Let's drop down, let's let's drop down, guys. I'm I'm you can keep up. Musket on top right, by the musket on top right. I see on him, on him, on the musket on top right. Spawns, 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 spawns. Heavy pen, okay. Now now kids are huge, by the way. Oh, look, Rudy, look, Rudy, look, Rudy. Catwalk, 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 all the sass, all the sass. I see, I see, I see, I see. Hey, I'm, I'm going catwalk, disrupting. White's yeah, on catwalk. Yeah, I'm looking white, looking white. White's looking. Nice. Yeah, nice. Dead. I'm going top dead zone, dead zone. Look soft. Dead. Nice. Theory. I see them, I see them. The area or whatever. Ari, Ari, Ari. Uh, all on, on right side, all on, 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 on left side, I mean, on A gate. Yeah, look, feet, look, feet, look, 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 all the healers here. All left side. Player, player. Cobra's on the edge, Cobra's. Oh, yeah, I, I, see, I see, I see, I see, I see. It's I'm almost full. I see, I see. Where's Amir? Response, response. I'm, 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 I'm dead, I'm dead. I, I just got shit. Fuck. Fuck. Uh, we need to be careful. Go up, go up, go up. That's it, that's it. That's it. Oh. Oh. Nice, Kaya. Hey, don't die. Don't die. I'm on Woody. Prim zone, prim zone. See him? Nice, dead. Are you on me on stairs? Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm on team. Oh, he's Respawning got me seven seconds. Respawning seconds. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, so, maybe feed two, two gate. one. Respawn now. Don't die, Kaya. Play yeah. safe. Destroy the, the gate, Simba. Yeah. Putting A guys. I'm respawning now. Haste again. I have to go up. Yeah. I'm gonna go in right gate. I'm shooting A gate right A -gate? now. Yeah. Not with you guys, it's still not with you. Yeah. Oh, I fucked up. Nice. I have no Look careful, people no coming up. Azad, Azad, Azad. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not dropping me now, uh, careful. Oh, mm -hmm. I fucked up so hard. 10 Did seconds, seconds. Oh. So drop it on him? Yeah, uh, it's a drop down angle, by the way. Yeah, it is. I might die here. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Clap, 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 clap. clap, clap. Yeah, yeah. I'm Just going back to that section of gameplay there, a couple of things I want to shout out that really, really impressed me was the, the, these guys, they're really trying to have high impact value for their raid. They're not purely focused on just stat padding. I mean, these guys aren't stat padders. I mean, you could look at NG VODs maybe from like nine months ago where he just banned Reign of Arrows on point. And that was a different play style, right? He got accused of being a stat padder there, but I don't think you could accuse him of being a stat padder here too much. And I'll tell you the reason why. When they were capping zone, they're down, they're in aggressive positions, and they're ready to step on. Then when, basically what happens is Bonsai lose pressure, so Para are able to counter, press. So, you know, once they get to close to capping, Para get the big wipe, because they coin flipped. Para then push into their zone of the map. What do these guys then do? They could just farm kills, right? I could just try and get kills and stat pad and get more damage. They don't they actually go for doors and gates. Now, why is it, you know... NG it hits the frame of gate C because if you're getting a repair and it's halfway done, a frame appears and you can basically start hitting the frame. So he's hitting the frame, basically damaging the repair that's been done. And intra hits A gate. These guys are not focused on kills here. They're just focused on providing value for their raid. Now, I really, really like that. That was that was nice, higher value play from both of them. I know it feels like it's slow pressure, but actually you getting those gates down just helps out your raid so, so much. So I thought that was really positive. Um, I thought... Look, you see, you saw what happened, right? Then they went upstairs. All of those great swords came up from Para and really just hard pressed them. It completely forces Intra off, and he has to completely reposition. They have, in fact, focus NG more. NG tries to stone form, get away. It doesn't really work. Unfortunately, he gets killed. 
Uh, but I thought that was just, you know, even these guys who were at the top of their game can still have really, really tough moments in the war. And you just saw there from that point of going from capturing and looking like they were going to win to then having to completely abandon what was their zone is uh, it's good, a bit of an issue here. Now, once they're out of this zone, they find it very difficult to recuperate. To get control of that zone again basically doesn't happen for the rest of the map. So I'm going to show you one last section of play. So this section of play I'm going to show you now is they're trying to regather positioning in their zone. But you can you see how hard it is to get for, look at the amount of reds on those stairs. For them to retake this zone is going to be so difficult now. And you can see that I think the bonsai strat was to control this side of the fort and power have completely pushed in now. So anyway, let's watch this. I have D-Gate, oh, We're losing so much pressure. Uh, yeah, but help, uh, just destroy d real quick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's almost done. No, it's dropped down, Kyle. Okay. Don't risk it. We have so many high. Oh my god. I am dropping! Oh, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Nine seconds. Oh. oh. We spawn in three. If you die, I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop. I died! Oh, you might get No problem. You, you it's spawn, yeah, but my fucking stacks. Stacks. Oh, yeah. Uh... We can still do it. I'm yeah, trying to make do. space here again. It works. It's Theo well from time. above, by the way. Can you see him? Right, so a pretty tough spot there for the guys. Struggled to recapture that zone. I've showed you what I think, what I think the passages play that you need to see. I'm just going to show you their stat screen and I'll talk over the top of it. <laughs> no, <it's> just... <sighs> nice try, though. Main yeah, good, okay, the assassin group is so bad, though, no? Like, yeah, we are f so Dude, we've been uh... fucking them the entire war. Literally, non-stop. Like, I don't assassin... know, Zep Zepta is like the freest kill in the exactly. world. Exactly. <laughs> like, how, many, how much damage did you guys take? Eight, eight times. Uh, let me check. Pay a damage taking of 311k. Uh, 660. Yeah. 390. How much? 441k. 311. I have 236,000. Okay. What the fuck do I have? 390? <laughs> you melee the lot. You're face tanking. <laughs> you melee the lot, guy. 25 kills, top kills, easy. Okay, cool. Top gate damage, that bad. No, it's not that bad. I was no, I have completely top, top oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. rolling the fucking first five minutes. I was hard trolling. Well, we're still. So, uh, what I think is really interesting here is just as they go over this perspective, is they're, they're talking about who's taking the most damage. Now, as a, when I used to play tank, we used to look at damage taken and think if you had the most damage taken, you were doing great. It's a different perspective as an assassin. If you're taking a lot of damage, the question is, why are you taking up all of that damage? Because if you're taking that damage, you're soaking up heals. The healer now has to focus you maybe at the expense of anyone else, and they can't clutch heal that other player because you're soaking up all the heals. So I think what they're doing there is they're actually looking for who's got the lowest damage taken because that's an indication of who can avoid the danger zones the most. Who's got that better positioning to avoid line of sight on the muskets? Who's trying to just walk in and just like use their hatchet a bit too aggressively maybe who's playing a touch touch too aggressively so it's an interesting way of looking at it look at your damage taken and identify who is taking twice the amount of damage in a script who is soaking up all of the damage is that the person you want to be soaking up all of the damage your heavy guys of course will soak up a lot of the damage but your light guys shouldn't be so that's a really interesting thing to note as well Look, that brings us to the end of the video. I think that was a really interesting video for me to produce. Being able to do the side-by-side -side perspectives as well was really interesting. I think these guys showed how valuable they can be when they work together. And, and they did. The communication was great. Thank you so much for allowing us to share that with the community. I hope that's taught you something. I hope that's taught you how you should play, how you can have such high impact. And, um, and yeah, just a fantastic video to watch from my perspective as well. And just to share my thoughts. If you think there's anything I missed chat, let me know in the YouTube comment section. But if I don't get to see you beforehand... Happy Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your families and your loved ones. Hope you have a fantastic time. And no one's on their own at Christmas. Drop into my Discord community. I will always have a chat with someone. Don't be alone. Make sure you're with someone, all right? Uh, that's all I want to say on that front. Um, thank you. More VODs, the better. Uh, please send me your VODs. Come into my Discord community. Drop your VODs in. I always say it's your VOD, your rules. So if you don't want me to show comms, if you don't want me to show particular segments, you can just let me know. I will always abide by your rules, your VOD, your rules. Um, Drop into the Twitch stream, Twitch link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the video. I think that was a great one. Please like and subscribe this if you genuinely found it useful as well, just to massively appreciate it from my perspective. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Keep safe, stay rocking.